Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Who are you? I'm the projection of Sweetie Pie. I'm the curator of a hundred years of nightmares. Trapped in a silver screen that never forgets. What do you want from me? You might call me a death collector. I would love watching yours. <laughs> Horror anthologies are typically a mixed bag of ideas and quality. While high concepts are often introduced, inevitably they succumb to either allotted runtimes or budget constraints. Where nightmare cinema strays from the norm is the degree of freedom and lack of restrictions it places on its directors. This allows for the creativity of all five directors to shine across these terrifying tales. Some segments are dark, some are fun, and some are better than others. But overall, there are a few better examples of high-quality anthology segments in as pristine and gory a package as this. Similar to other found footage series, Nightmare Cinema, which is currently streaming on Shudder's Tales of Terror, originate from a single location. Each segment begins with a protagonist wandering into an empty movie theater. The theater acts sort of as a supernatural hub, as once a protagonist enters, they're trapped in their seat, forced to watch a horror film that featured them in the starring role. Each of the segments explores distinctly different characters, locations, and horror themes. The only thing they share in common is their tangential connection to the theater. The theater is maintained by the amoral projectionist played by Mickey Rourke, and while we never learn his backstory, he serves as the overall supernatural antagonist. As caretaker, he maintains the stage upon which the fate of each character will be explored. He also determines the horrors they're about to be exposed to. So for this review, I figured I'd break down each of the tales of terror. Number one, The Thing in the Woods, directed by Alejandro Brujas. By far the most fun of the five tales, The Thing in the Woods is a campy homage to 80s slashers with a creature feature twist. A fun weekend in the woods is brought to an abrupt end when a figure donning welding gear begins slaughtering everyone. As the welder pursues the last of the victims, their mysterious backstory is revealed, and this is when things take a drastic shift. This shift allows it to evolve past its slasher trope and evolves into something pretty terrifying. This segment has some of the best production value with regard to its gore effects and fight choreography. While I enjoyed this segment overall, beginning with the most overtly silly segment is a strange decision. While it has a big payoff, those put off by its overt campiness might be dissuaded from sticking with Nightmare Cinema. Number 2, Myri, directed by Joe Dante. The most introspective of the tales asks, what is the cost of altering our appearance to appease others? In an attempt to ease her insecurities about her facial scar, Anna agrees to undergo reconstructive surgery. But what begins as a single routine procedure quickly evolves into extensive work that shifts from routine to terrifying. Director Joe Dante emphasizes paranoia as the audience anxiously waits for the bandages to come off and what damage, if any, has been done to Anna. Characters in this segment shift from caring and concerned to conceited and demented, which makes for several nasty surprises. This narrative's focus was solely on social commentary as it takes society's obsession with looks and applies a Twilight Zone-esque extrapolation into the absurd. It's goofy, graphic, and will make you think twice about going under the knife. And now for a brief intermission. If you've been enjoying this episode of Daily Horror Habit, please take a moment to subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform or leaving a review on iTunes. And thank you for your continued support, which drives the show's success. And now, without further ado, let's get back to today's horrifying episode. Number 3, Mash It, directed by Ruhei Kitamara. What it lacks in originality, Mash It makes up for in shocking violence and gallons of blood. Father Benedict's congregation has become possessed by the devil. Now, as they turn on him, Father Benedict and a lone nun must fight back against the devilish forces. This tale of terror was filmed in the same church as John Carpenter's The Fog, and Mashit has some of the best set design of the bunch. Its use of ominous shadows shrouds the church setting in brooding tension that's reminiscent of The Exorcist. While its plot is rather tame compared to the originality of the other segments, it builds to a terrific finale. A final, gruesome showdown between our protagonists and a horde of knife-wielding possessed kids yields some of the bloodiest moments of the film. Kitamura executes well on a tried-and-true horror concept, making it one of the more cinematic, but safe, segments. Number 4, This Way to Egress, directed by David Slade. 
Just a heads up, this is my favorite segment of the film. This way to egress is the most visually striking segment as it's shot entirely in black and white. A mother anxiously awaits in a doctor's office with her two sons for unknown reasons. When she approaches the receptionist's desk to inquire about their lengthy wait, she sees the receptionist's face has become disfigured. As time goes on, her surroundings become increasingly distorted. People begin to resemble mutants. The floors and walls once clean are now coated in a thick muck. As her perceptions of her surroundings become more jarring, her understanding and our understanding of reality is called into question. This is my favorite segment given its Twilight Zone look and approach to bizarre, otherworldly storytelling. Being shot in black and white is essential in creating this suffocatingly dreamlike world. This would have been a much better initial segment for Nightmare Cinema as a way of displaying its dedication to weird and creative horror stories it's trying to tell. And finally, number five, Dead, directed by Mick Garris. Another example of skillful execution on a tried and true idea serves as a fitting conclusion. After being the sole survivor of a shooting that robs him of both his parents, Riley's concept of reality and the afterlife begin to blur together. As he is recovering in the ICU, corpses, some of who he's familiar with, begin roaming the halls, and then a killer shows up. This was another enjoyable segment that wasn't terribly original, yet it is Garrus's pristine execution which makes it enjoyable. The makeup effects for one particular corpse is hauntingly memorable, with a memorably gory finale to boot. The reason it works so well is that the performances of the main character as confused and a wholesome kid is especially convincing, to the degree you can't help but feel for him. What ultimately separates Nightmare Cinema from most anthology films is its perfect coat of polish. No segment feels blatantly marred by budget or length restrictions. Each tale of terror feels satisfactory in its conclusion, and while I liked some segments more than others, none of them were crushingly disappointing. The order of segments is somewhat questionable, but as individual parts, they delve into each director's darkly creative mind. Nightmare Cinema's final moments set the stage for a potential sequel, while the film overall still feels as if the story it came to tell gets told. A satisfying horror anthology that succeeds more often than it stumbles, so be sure to check it out while it's streaming on Shudder. This is an easy recommendation for people that are fans of VHS, ABCs of Death, Southbound, and so on. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.